island packet, you know, these guys, big, heavy, ocean-going battleships with hulls that are all that weird beige color, cutter rigs, and the reliability of a wood-burning stove. What if they decided to make a performance cruiser, like Island Packet meets Beneteau first? What would that look like? When two seemingly opposite forces get together to make a baby, we usually get something really weird. Like that time when Chrysler coupled with Maserati and turned the LeBaron into this, which never really caught on. Or we get something absolutely beautiful, like when Toyota got together with BMW and we were given the new Toyota Supra. So what's to happen when Island Packet gets involved, when they partner with, say, C&C? The folks who make this. We just did an article on the Practical Sailor site that you can go read, and you should. This is big news. I'll leave a link below. For more than 30 years, long keels, internal ballast, heavy displacement with attached rudders, a beige hull, and a head sail handling self-tacking jib boom have defined the Island Packet fleet. But when the IP crew teamed up with performance-oriented designer Tim Jacket, all bets were off, and the switch from perpetual beige to a dark blue hull was just the beginning. Starting with a clean slate, the collaborative design effort led to the launch of a very different cruiser. Creator of many CNC yachts and tartan yacht designs, Jacket puts more emphasis on light air sailing and upwind performance than past IP designers. Island Packet founder Bob Johnson made sure the accommodations worked at anchor and at sea. At times, the dialogue was probably filled with debate over issues ranging from foam core choice to the need for solid acrylic countertops, but the quest stayed focused on a best-of-both-world sailboat, and at first glance, the rig dimensions, no-nonsense deck layout, comfortable interior, and efficient hull and deck proportions seemed to have hit that mark. But in IP's Largo, Florida facility, the Blue Jacket 40 is an island packet cousin with fleeting family resemblance. By the time the development was complete, the traditional island packet's long keel had morphed into a fin and bulb, 5 feet 9 inches for the East Coast slash Caribbean, and 7 foot 10 if you're going to head off into the sunrise. A couple tons of weight had been shed through a commitment to using foam core and resin-infused fiberglass hull and deck construction. Less ballast was used, but more efficiently. Island Packet's signature attached rudder was changed in favor of a high aspect ratio spade rudder, while another IP badge, that self-tacking Hoyt jib boom, survived the design overhaul. When the collaboration began in earnest, the goal was to reduce weight and increase sail area while engineering a Category A ocean-going sailboat. Johnson played a key role in the development of those CE standards and is quick to point out the value of minimizing down-flooding potential, maximizing riding movement when deeply heeled, and delivering a stable boat. This new Blue Jacket 40 carries a CE stability index number of 40, well into the A ocean-going category, which begins at 32. Add to this the well-engineered approach to construction, and it's clear that a firm foundation has been laid for an able, undersail, seagoing cruiser. To build the Blue Jacket 40, the IP factory adopted the resin infusion and foam core construction approach. A low void content, high fiber to resin ratio laminate was achieved by vacuum infusing vinyl ester resin into the biaxial and quadraxial e-glass reinforcement. Quadraxial. I always thought biaxial was strong, and it is. These guys are using quadraxial, and that's important and fun to say, quadraxial. This creates a stiff, strong foam sandwich structure. Both the hull and deck were laminated in one-part molds, eliminating secondary bonds. The core was tapered to solid fiberglass in high-load areas, such as where hardware attachments were made or keel bolt loads are focused. A big upside to resin infusion is the way it forces resin into kerfs, the checkerboard-like slots in the foam, allowing it to conform to compound curves. Instead of encapsulating ballast in a long run of keel, a well-proven island packet approach, the new design called for an external lead ballast, which may anger the die-hard island packet fans, but it does offer some advantages to the cruising sailor. The fin and bulb design developed more riding movement with less ballast by placing much of the lead in an anvil-shaped bulb at the very tip 
of the foil-shaped keel. J-shaped stainless steel keel bolts were cast into the lead and bolted to a grid bonded to the inside of the hull. This fiberglass framework spread the lever-like keel loads over a much larger section of the hull. The rudder is one of three key elements attached to the hull and the deck, and like the other two, the rig and the keel, the attachment needs to be well engineered and equally constructed. In the case of the classic IP rudder, it's clear that the bottom of the rudder blade support strut and a shorter bearing to tip span lessen the load of the rudder bearing, which is mounted on the hull skin. On the other hand, this Blue Jacket 40's deep, large surface area semi-balanced spade rudder offers a different set of design and engineering challenges. The efficiency of such a foil is hard to beat. It's both a superior lifting surface and a steering appendage, but the carbon fiber stock carries all of the blade-induced torsional steering loads as well as the bending force linked to the riding moment of the boat. Between Bob Johnson's MIT engineering training and Jacket's years of spade rudder familiarity, the transition was in good hands. From a construction perspective, it's always nice to see the interior components of a boat contribute to the overall strength and stiffness. The Blue Jacket 40 designers made good use of hull bonded liners, carefully installed bulkheads, and interior molded parts to enhance the overall structural web of this boat. This is seen less and less in production sailboats today, where the trend tends to be loosely hanging joinery and trim rather than making it part of the internal structure to stiffen the boat, helping to link the hull and deck and aiding in the distribution of global loads radiating throughout the structure. When comparing the IP40 and this new boat, nowhere do the numbers have more to say than in the comparison of displacement and mast height. The IP40 is 22,800 pounds with a 53 foot mast versus the Blue Jacket 17,900 pounds for the deep keel and a 62 foot mast define a huge increase in light air performance under sail. This nearly nine foot increase in mast height and the shedding of almost 5,000 pounds redefine the sail plan options. Some might assume that this would set the stage for a carbon fiber mast and boom, plus create an urge to use titanium pins and other weight saving hardware. But part of the genius of this boat is the design team's clear grasp of the cruising market. The new boat is a cruising boat for those who love to sail and do so without a crew of eight. The rig has been designed and engineered with this in mind. The mast rigging and sail plan reflect a sensible convergence where technology performance and cost correlate. Esoteric extremes have been avoided, but design development has not been ignored. The nicely tapered Sparcraft T6160L alloy spar boom and spreaders are proven as a workhorse combo. The slight performance uptick of upgrading to a carbon rig would significantly bump up the bottom line, and using an alloy spar instead makes it easier to mount tracks or radar brackets. It also eliminates concerns about what a lightning strike might do to a carbon spar. The sail area to displacement ratio of 20.6 and double head sail solent sail plan make this a cruiser friendly rig and a sailboat fine-tuned for a short-handed crew. Gone are sluggish traits that would make a light breeze a sign to fire up the diesel. The roller-furled working jib sheets to the end of a self-tacking carbon fiber Hoyt boom. Our only concern is that with no preventer attached, an unintentional jibe could send the deck sweeping boom across the foredeck with a vengeance, and anyone in its way becomes a target. A preventer for the jib boom would make sense, especially in heavy weather and during off the wind reaching and running. Another option would be ordering the boat without that jib boom, which you can. One of the make or break factors in any Solent Reacher sail plan is the drive that the small jib big main sail plan delivers. We've tested similarly rigged boats that needed a larger head sail because there was just too much boat to be driven by that big main sail and small jib combo. The good news here is that the new boat is quite capable under this working jib and big main thanks to the rig height increase and hull weight decrease. We found that it wasn't until we were in single digit wind speeds that the big main and working jib proved lacking. At that point, a big reacher rekindled the flame. This is really good news. However, the way in which the sail plan makes it easy to set the right amount of sail to cope with a wide range of conditions is excellent. The stem sports a stainless bowsprit that features several innovations. The weldment provides a tack point for both head sails, a roller and fair lead for the anchor and ground tackle, and a mount for the Hoyt boom. The slot and shape may put limits on the anchor choice, but the setup of the boat we tested worked well. 
The challenge with a plumb stem is getting the anchor far enough forward to allow retrieval without chipping away at the top sides. A relatively short extension would do that job in flat sea conditions, but once the boat began to pitch in a marginal anchorage, the anchor's swing arc increases. There's a distinct IP appeal that's apparent to those who step below on this new boat. The dominant oversized starboard galley features a smallish centerline sink, copious solid acrylic countertop space, a first-rate two-burner force 10 stove with a guardrail, a microwave and a stainless drawer style fridge and freezer. There's a hatch above the galley and the fiberglass non-skid sole is appreciated when cooking underway or when crew clad in rain-soaked fallies come down the companionway. The main saloon is a spacious feel with the table folded up against the bulkhead and when lowered and unfolded it affords dining space on both sides. This is more of an in-port or at-anchor amenity and another example of how the design covers multiple bases. A very useful strategically positioned nav station is included too and it's been tucked into the port side adjacent to the companionway ladder. Beneath the ladder is engine access which is by no means an engine room but it offers adequate access to key components. Forward of the galley saloon living area is a spacious head with shower and a sizable forward double V berth cabin. For aft accommodations, there are two options, side-by-side -side double berths in a tight but functional under the cockpit cabin arrangement or a cabin to port with a massive cockpit locker to starboard. Testers noted that both tankage and storage were consistent with the performance cruiser mission, minimal but adequate. During tests under power on a flat calm sea with side setting current, the Blue Jacket's 40 horsepower 3-cylinder Yanmar hummed away and the max prop delivered enough thrust to tally a 7.2 reading on the knot meter. The semi-balanced rudder didn't flutter or vibrate and the steering control was smooth and positive, remaining responsive even when our velocity through the water was nearly non-existent. In reverse, all it took was a little stern way for the boat to be easily steered in either direction. Care needs to be taken when backing up at anything over a couple knots due to the powerful rudder's desire to lever itself into a hard over position. The big, full batten, well-shaped mainsail behaved admirably on the hark and back car track and lazy jacks tamed the mail during hoisting, dousing, and reefing. It's a big plus to have the draft and roach available in a conventionally hoisted mainsail. Mid-boom sheeting and a diminutive traveler were trade-offs to keep the cockpit free of main sheet tackle. Racers will miss the control that end boom sheeting delivers, while cruisers will love the Dodger Bimini combo and the absence of the main sheet tackle sweeping across the cockpit. The big reacher up front is a powerhouse in light, close reaching conditions and a major player on deeper reaches. In fact, the need for an asymmetrical is reduced thanks to the masthead hoist and upper girth of the furlable reacher. The one cautionary note is that although the sail seems like a plus size number one Genoa, it's not meant to be used in close reach double digit breezes. Sailmakers confirm this based upon an increase in their reacher repair business recently. From our point of view, the Blue Jacket 40 hits a sweet spot midway between a race boat and a heavy displacement cruiser that needs the diesel or 15 knots of wind to really move. The Blue Jacket's hull form and foils afford ample upwind performance and head sail handling is a user-friendly experience. This boat's very well thought out. But with a hefty base price tag of $390,000, the Blue Jacket is not a bargain boat, but you do get what you pay for. And in this case, it's a well-built boat made by a crew that stands behind what they build. The Blue Jacket 40 is an efficient, well-built performance cruiser with comfortable accommodations that burn with sensible usability. While you're here, don't forget to hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to check out the full article at practical-sailor.com. What do you think? Is this island packet blended with performance cruiser a good idea? Or is it something else entirely? I like it. I think it's all the modern amenities as the French boats like Beneteau with the bulletproof know-how build quality of island packet. Here's a company that still takes in all their old boats for refits because they stand behind them wanting to take a bite out of the performance cruiser market that Beneteau has a lock on. So they call up the guy from CNC. It's pretty smart and I think it's great. What do you think? I can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments.